Show these suckers how to ball out here. Oh man, let me get this together here. Oh, layup. Oh no. Shot. Oh, three. Three. Oh, it's like Brick City out here. Mid range. Oh my goodness, I can't buy a bucket out here. I missed the whole damn basket. Oh my goodness, what's going on, man? My game is looking trash. Rap. Oh, here we go. Black Power Media shirt. Now we cooking. Now we cooking. Tree. Tree. I'm taking all three of y'all with these right here. Between the legs. Oh my goodness, behind the back, layup. Oh, did he just do a reverse? He is in beast mode out here. I ain't gotta look, it's falling. Oh my goodness, this guy is going. Three, two, one, Kobe. Nice, Black Power Media, baby. Nice, empower yourself. Go get you some of that Black Power Media again. Right here, blackpowermedia.org, yeah. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.
All right, what's up, world? Welcome to another edition of it. I Mix What I Like here at Black Power Media. Again, I'm Jared Ball. Happy to be your host. Hopping up here for a relatively short discussion of the film Nope that I just, uh, that, that I and my wife just went to see yesterday. Uh, so just off the top, there are going to be spoilers. So take the next couple minutes while I say something about something else to, to leave or move on or whatever, make other choices if you need to. I'm not going to be mad at you. Uh, otherwise, uh, please stick around, invite somebody else. Uh, and if you're seeing this not live, do the same thing. And if you are live, peace and welcome to you. I appreciate you all showing up. Um, and I will jump in the chat in a few minutes, but I want to say, uh, uh and get your comments and questions and thoughts. Um, but, uh, keep it relatively short because I'm gonna come back at one o'clock to do another relatively short piece about cyber colonialism and in an article that Seb Solemn just put me on to uh, shout out to her and the doom and gloom uh, podcast crew. So um, again, two relatively short pieces today, but I didn't want to take up, I don't think I'm going to have time during my normal show time tomorrow. Uh, given all that I think is happening to get into these things, I didn't obviously want to just wait and I'm taking the next week off from the remix so I can finish the essay and some other things that are being built around the piece I'm going to do at one o'clock on cyber colonialism. A little bit, not, not much, not really heavy lifting, just a little bit. So some light work today, a little light stuff, little short stuff, uh, a couple short pieces today. Uh, tomorrow morning, by the way, on the regular show, we're going to have, uh, again, Dev Springer of the Groundings podcast to talk about uh, the Cuban Revolution, their recent trip to Cuba, its relationship to Black August. We're going to launch Black August, I'm probably going to go through my own Black August mixtape and share with you all, you know, go through and talk a little bit about that. And then I think we're going to have representatives of Omali Eshetela's, uh African People's Socialist Party to talk about the recent FBI raid uh, down there as well. So I expect tomorrow morning to be pretty packed. So again, why I'm jumping on here to do a little bit of this today. So again, like, share, subscribe, do all of the things, hit all the buttons, invite people to join you. All right. So again, spoiler alert. Um, um, but I want to start off by, uh, you know, starting with the, the, the lens through which I view all of this. And again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, the colonialism media model. I still basically operate off of that, but more to the, to the shortness and to the fun of it is, uh, this here again, uh, linked in the show description, the Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance, um, that uh, is discussed here in the context of uh, that that um, Mahersa Ali, uh, this horrible, the, the Green Book movie, but summarizes the point well enough, I think, uh, in terms of what is the Vernon philosophy. Uh, so the Vernon philosophy of Black media avoidance, VP BMA, is a semi-ironic homage to an old friend and an argument for a much needed political clarity around and aggressive hostility toward popular culture and mass media. Simply many years ago, a black friend and coworker Vernon said he would no longer go to any films which included black actors. Initially, I thought this absurd or at least an overcorrective response to a clear, longstanding and well-documented problem of black media portrayal. I only needed a few decades in the accumulation of massive student loan debt to realize just how correct Vernon was then and still is now. And then in, in all of these links, you can get, you know, uh, access to more of my own work on 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 this subject that attempts to be a little more serious and academic and politically radical, all of those things. Um, but for now, that's simply the point. Uh, and and more specifically, in fact, let me pull that back up because that that wasn't the the. I don't think that's the full thing there. In fact. Um, what I'm saying, I'm said differently, starting said differently, the VPMA or the Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance calls for an immaterial boycott of commercial pop culture product as any seemingly redeemable content either isn't as any seemingly redeemable content either isn't really or exists only to further confuse, weaken, or diminish the capacity for critical, radical, and countervailing thought. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not condemning, in this case, Black filmmakers or actors. I'm not condemning 
uh, I'm not even calling for an actual material boycott of, of, of this media product and these films and whatever we're talking about. Uh, for reasons we can go into at another time or I covered differently around the buying power argument, I don't think boycotts are effective tactically, uh, particularly at this point. I think the histories of boycotts as they're presented going back to Montgomery and the bus boycott and all that are wildly misrepresentative of what happened then and the potential for it to be effective now. Uh, what I'm arguing for is this really an intellectual self-defense, self-defensive fitness as public enemy described that w there needs to be, even as we go and have fun or we, whatever we're doing with these media, we have to at some point make a conscious and aggressive immaterial boycott of seeing these as these product as having any positive impact on our political struggles. I don't think they do. The net, certainly as a net total, it is wildly unequal and negative. So any positive is overwhelmingly mitigated by the context, some of which I'm going to talk about here briefly. But it's it's the, the point being is that whatever you walk away from, and, and I, by the way, this applies beyond just black or African descended people. I, I'm really saying any oppressed community or any group or any individual looking for yourself in these products should not. They're not going to feed a radical analysis ultimately of what it is you're tr or, 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 or that you're trying to apply to whatever condition you're, you're critical of or assessing. So as I said here, the boycott is immaterial because the VPBMA is not a particular political call to action and is specific only to the arena of dominant idea formation, public opinion, and analysis. The purpose is to overtly and aggressively challenge the tendency among us all to desire recognition from power or to see ourselves positively reflected by power and to focus more on assuming power, the only position from which to control popular dissemination of media symbol and image. So that's that's the approach I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from when you know, so it's not that I didn't go to the movie and want to enjoy myself or even at times did enjoy myself. It, it, that's not the point. The point is if, if, if any tendency to discuss these as having a positive relationship to political struggles, I think mistaken. All right. So um, let me pull up a couple of other things here. Um I'm just going to beg your forgiveness on some of the production value here, <laughs> admittedly. Uh, but um, all right, so that's said. All right, so so we go to see the film, and I think the problem so beyond the problem that I just quickly outlined with the, the the Vernon philosophy is that there is there is the problem that exists today of all of the issues of the world can be are more likely than ever before in human history to be put on the table for popular consumption and discussion. But the frame is ultimately so limiting that it, it again devalues any pop, uh, pr progressive or, or, or um, positive uh, impact that it might have. So, and, and again, this is. So that's so that's that. So so Jordan Peele has the problem of trying to, relative to Hollywood, produce some substantive, thought-provoking content. But because he's chosen this preferred comedic sci-fi approach to his filmmaking, there isn't a lot of it, it. It limits what he can and cannot do, and how overt the messaging can be, and how. I think powerful ultimately the messaging can be. So he so he again whether it's get out I didn't see us I admit that. So I've I've you know as I've said so initially I was saying that get out is to race what Boots Riley's uh sorry to bother you is to class. Uh having read some things about us I don't want to see it I don't like horror movies that's the other thing. I don't like horror movies. I don't like jump scares. I don't like being scared. I don't like attempts to scare me that even fail. I don't like any of that. But having read about us, there is there's a there's an argument out there that that suggests that this is his bookend to the racial critique and get out and the class critique in us. 
And I'm sure it's there. I'm sure just as I saw it in, in Get Out, the racial analysis, and even the class analysis in there, I thought was excellent. I loved it. I love what he was trying to do. But ultimately, particularly when I learned about the original ending from Get Out being changed to satisfy the zeitgeist of the George Floyd and Black Lives Matter protest moment and not wanting to upset people by showing the lead character actually getting arrested for shooting up and killing a house full, killing a house full of white folks <laughs> and getting walked off in a jumpsuit. They felt like that, that, that could, that ending would have been too uh, uproarious uh, for audiences, too inspirational in terms of condemning the state for audiences. So they wanted to put a happier ending on it. So even just little things like that impact filmmakers for, and prevent them from doing whatever their best work could be in making the points that they want to make. The same thing happens in this film. And this film, Nope, is even more abstract, even more uh, um, vague and, and requires, I, I, I actually was going to do this last night, but stopped because I had, I, I realized there were so many things that I did that I at least wanted to acknowledge. I'm not going to go into a whole cinematic thing, f critique of it. And I'm not capable of doing that, but I learned that there were so many Easter eggs and gems dropped in there that you would have to, that you would only be able to, to appreciate if you knew about so many other things about Peel's interests um, that it does it, 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 it. In other words, for people who really know it might work, but for people who are looking for a particular clarity around a political message or who are thinking that Peel is looking to inspire radical thought, it can't do that. It's too, it's too, it's, so, 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 um, let me just go through a couple of these notes here that I have, and then I'll, I'll come back. So for instance, one of the prevailing arguments about this film is that it is ultimately Peel having dealt with race and class in his previous films. Now he wants to deal with animal rights. So this is why we get the story of the monkey's revenge. This is why we get the, 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 the backstory of the animal wranglers and trainers. This is why we get the, the Easter egg that, that Jordan Peele, re, I mean, uh, that, that uh, uh, Kaluuya's character realizes he can't, that, that the uh, alien is in fact not a spaceship, but is in fact in, in its own living being. And that by not looking at it in the way he knows not to look directly in the eyes of horses, he can avoid being killed. Not particularly new as a as a as a as a trope to deal with. I mean, Bird Box just did this most recently. I mean, so that wasn't you know, but but so you know those kinds of, you know that was in there. Um, uh, like I love the fact that the film starts with the 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 uh, um, oh, what was the monkey's name now? The monkey's revenge. Uh, Gordy, Gordy's Revenge, it's, and it starts with a very, you know, clearly bloody, violent scene where a monkey that was the the uh, uh, the star of a, a TV sitcom loses his mind and kills a whole, attacks a bunch of people, kills a bunch of people on set. Uh, I had to look this up. This was actually related to a real life incident uh, where a, a, a woman on a, a TV show was brutally beaten by a chimpanzee they were using on set. And just like you see in Nope, had to have so much reconfigure, reconstructive surgery that uh, she basically wore a similar kind of hat and veil over her face. Um, uh, but I was thinking, but because by the end of the film, um, oh wait, wait, I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, I did. Yes, I'm, my wife is checking it. I did say spoiler alert. And uh, uh, right, and the trigger for the monkey was the popping of the balloons. But but the film is trying to make the point with the monkey, with with the characters that survive and don't in the film, uh, that those who care about animals are seen as good, and those who don't are seen as bad, and that animals can be pushed much like this alien entity, which is clearly there. Uh, um, killing people as revenge, protecting its territory, having having its own environment disturbed by human beings. Again, uh, it's it's the kaiju uh, phenomenon. And I had to look this I looked this up too. Jordan Peele's affinity for Japanese anime and, and cartoons and film 
the, the kaiju, I think I'm saying it correctly, is the 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 not alien per se, actually, but the supernatural being that predates humans here on Earth that only comes into play when when provoked by the the the, the bad behavior of human beings. So there's this this theme, like like all of these animals, the environment, the 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 world itself responds to the bad behavior of human beings. And but I thought if you want to actually, I thought, for instance, and this is why we nicknamed Dr. Todd Stephen Burroughs 228 or 226, because he was exactly twice as smart as the number applied given to the to the to the chimp in Planet of the Apes. Who, who in the one, uh, um, what's the one with um, old boy who apparently, um, what's the one with old boy? Anyway, the one, one of the newer Planet of the Apes where they show, it's like a better version of showing when the animals organizing and rebelling against their enslavement. Like that was actually inspiration. I actually like that. This movie doesn't do it as well. It doesn't have that kind of, you know the, the 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 oppressed, exploited animals organizing, rebelling thing that I loved in 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 the Planet of the Apes joint. I thought that was that was much better done than what we get here. But that's clearly what I also made. I wrote a note here: Who paid Kiki Palmer to vape in this film? Now we know that there's a there's a long history of tobacco companies using films to promote, particularly to younger audiences, smoking to 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 uh, you know sustain their business model. And she's vaping throughout the whole thing. And I and and it didn't even necessarily seem to fit her character per se. I'm not, I don't know. I don't maybe it did. I don't, but I was like, who paid her to vape in this thing? Um oh by the way, did did folks see and this is a related thing I do next next hour, the 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 tech dude, the white boy that comes to help them set up all the cameras in his when they show him in his apartment, he's he's got a whole crypto mining setup in there. They don't mention it, but it's 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 I don't know what Jordan was trying to do or say about that. Uh but that was that was that was you know. Um so then so I'm not entirely sure is the film saying this is about animals or is it saying that we uh, as black people are the animals and need to, I don't know if he was trying to do all of that. I'm not entirely sure. There was another thing that I looked up and saw, and I included a, a, a link to one of the videos uh, in the show description here. Um, oh, my bad. My wife said he was not white. Okay, the tech dude, he wasn't a white boy. He was, I don't know, was he Latino? I don't know. Was he Latino? Maybe he was Latino, but he was a white Latino. Go ahead, text me again, sweetheart. <laughs> Whatever he was, he was he he was crypto mining. So another thing I looked up in the video was that 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 apparently Jordan Peele has been compared often as or, and said to be the new Steven Spielberg, um, and and that he's he's you know adopted this like he's he's welcomed this comparison. But the note I wrote here is that Spielberg didn't just do E. T. and Jaws. And when he wanted to make his what he thought were his overt political statements, he made very direct, from his perspective, well-made films about Amistad and Schindler's List, just as examples there. So my point is, is that if Jordan Peele wants to be the new Steven Spielberg, but also stay in the lane of, of offering racial and class commentary and critique, then he should also adopt the, 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 the version of Spielberg that doesn't just do sci-fi. So, for instance, in this film, one of the the, the points that, that that others have made about this, uh, including I think in the video I linked in the description, is that when you see the fist bump between the Korean kid and the the chimp before he, the chimp gets his head blown off, uh, the, the fist, that was supposed to be the equivalent of the the boy in ET and the whole finger thing and all of that. So, so, but, but my point is, I would like to see Jordan abandon the sci-fi uh, genre and do a real film. Like I thought the film, I thought this film could have been so much better if they had stayed with that initial storyline. First of all, I don't even, my bad for even taking this long. I'm, how the hell are you going to kill Keith David in the first five minutes? And he only comes back in one actual flashback and then is pictured in some other scene. Like why, why Keith David is too dope for, for that, uh, uh, for that treatment. 
Um, others have said that, that the Keith David compared was was you know there's all these allusions to the Scorpion King film. Keith David apparently had a role in that. Um, some other movies, stuff like that. But I I didn't like that part. But 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 the but the storyline of that that. That Kaluya and Kiki Palmer are the and, and Keith David are the descendants of the formerly un, or or in real life never named black jockey who was pictured in the very first move, motion picture film. The white dude's name is remembered and documented in history. The film fictionalizes the black man's name uh, and the, the 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 connection to him of this family. So that part unreal. But the man and the horse riding were real. They're just, you know, once you're, 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 you know, African people and horses, again, sort of the point, like, are we the animals? Are they like they're not needing to be named uh, or remembered or documented in history? Uh, but the white man who did the first motion picture film using them, he is documented and remembered. But I think the film would have done better to make the points, whether it's about animals, whether it's about black people, by staying out of sci fi. And going with the, that initial storyline, I think a, a, a black animal training family, the only one left connected to that history. Like they said, ever since movies have been made, we've had our skin in the game uh, with that history. And then and then in the, con the contemporary Hollywood mu movie environment, I think that would have been a great setting to tell all the stories you want about animal abuse about the environment, about society, about everything. And then it would have been like an action. But what we got here was, was again, a vague, I don't know, abstract uh, sci-fi film, which admittedly is not my favorite genre. But again, if, if, if it's necessary to tell certain stories or make certain points, I get it. I just don't think he did it. I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it. So I, I even made it no way. I said, I said, this film is, is, this film is to political analysis what Fred Moulton's essays are to racial analysis. <laughs> so I'll just make a little joke. Like this is it's, it's, it's too, you need to know way too much for it to make sense. Um, all right, so let me show you a couple of things here that I'm, I picked up from some of the quick research I did. It's not like, but that I think was kind of interesting in terms of what the film was trying to do and why I don't I don't think it worked for any of what we would consider our purposes. So again, this is what I'm saying about the production value of my screenshots here. Um, so the film opens with this biblical line: "I will cast abominable filth upon you, make you vile, and make you a spectacle." So the 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 idea being that that this is another comparison to Sodom and Gomorrah type stuff. Uh, whatever city that the Scorpion King was sent set in in ancient Kemet or Egypt, uh, um, you know, like like punishment for your ill treatment in this case of animals or of people or of black people or of uh, or whatever. Um, this one here, whoops, whoops. This is the jockey the, the, that that they give a false sort of backstory to. Uh, but uh, um, is is in real life still never was known, never named, nor was the horse apparently. Um, these are just some of the films, like a lot of allusions in the film to like the westerns and the movies that Jordan Peele apparently has liked, you know. Uh, and this film being with Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte, who were initially competing with each other, but then forced to fight a common enemy. It, you know, something they said similar to what Kiki Palmer and Kaluuya's characters were. This is the Scorpion King illusion. Uh, this is the piece about the eye. You can't, you know, the point being, whoops, the point being that you can't um, look the animal or the, the, you know, in the eye. And nope, by the way, is also meant, considered to be not of planet Earth. It considered by some to be an acronym for not of planet Earth. Um, oh, wait a minute. So what are you saying that he is? I don't. I don't know. My wife is trying to convince me with this with the racial. But I didn't mean to describe him as a black, a white boy. I, forgive me. He's not a white boy. OK, my bad. The, the other character, whatever this character, this character. This character, whatever, whatever, forgive me, as someone who is constantly, you know, misidentified racially, I should be more sensitive. 
transparent. But but whatever he, whoever he is, this character is uh, was was crypto mining in the joint. That was my point. Uh, that's more reference to the Scorpion King. The TMZ guy, I thought this was an obvious critique, you know, like the, the, the critique of TMZ and paparazzi, and he gets himself killed by wanting to document uh, everything. Um, this is, I believe, this is from the real monkey that uh, attacked uh, on, that, on this show here. Um, this is the real attack, uh, chimp attack, victim seeks you know, so this was, the, and, and you saw in the movie, this was the kind of outfit that the woman who was similarly attacked wore. Um, yeah, that was from, from that. Yeah, and this is what she looked like in the movie. You know, so so they're clearly doing that. And then I, I loved that this, because we had a lot, my little crew had a lot of fun with the Tillicum uh you know the revolutionary like i actually thought the series on Tilicum did better in demonstrating the revolutionary response to animal abuse than 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 nope did but as others pointed out and this actually did cross my mind during the film like are they trying to is this going to you know is this a Tilicum reference the legendary revolutionary Tilicum, who even they showed genetically produced whales that were similarly dis similarly disposed to disposing their captors. I loved it. I love it. I, I would love to think that I could pass on my hate uh, genetically. <laughs> um, I saw the cross in this thing, but they were trying to make a different point. But I saw the, 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 the sign of the cross in that cloud. I don't know if that was intentional. Uh, but they were saying it was like it was a similar thing to Wizard of Oz, uh, to the Wizard of Oz with the tornadoes and all of that, like Jordan Peele's, you know. Um, which one was this? Actually, I'm not even sure what I was getting on that one. Um, yeah, right. This is Keith David's character in Scorpion King, so that's what they were saying was the the the, the thing there. Um, so that was really it. So, so the, the one thing that I that I that they that I made a note here was that that the character in the film uh, played by Michael Wincott, I recognized him. He is the uh, older white guy who uh, is the cinematic, the cinematograph, cinema, cinematographer expert that they want, who runs the hand cranked camera so they can capture the the entity on film without electricity. Uh, but he actually played a strung out teenage, like, um, drug addict, you know, rock, you know, heavy metal kid in the, in, in the movie, I, th I still think is a classic called Talk Radio, which was itself, I believe, based on a true story of a, of a 1980s uh, talk shock jock talk show host in Houston who was, who was killed by white supremacists. Uh, because he was, you know, a Jew and he was critical of white supremacy and he took like, you know, he took provocative positions on radio. And the film is really good. I keep forgetting the, the actor that starred. What's the name of the guy that starred in that film? Um, but but I made this note because when I saw that actor and I was disappointed in 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 the film, in Nope, that is, I was looking at it and I was thinking, I this is why I would love to see Jordan Peele or someone with his skill set and 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 interest in critiquing the world do an updated version of talk radio i think you could do a lot with the youtube podcaster space that is of 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 offering a critique of what happens to the host themselves what happens when they the 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 trappings of of advertising and, and commercialism kick in. The trappings of of being critical of the audience that you want so much of, of your own downfall, the individual's downfall in their own personal life, or drug or, or alcohol addiction, or uh, what happens when you raise too many provocative ideas. Like, there's so many things that could be done, and so that was what I was thinking of. Like, why are we getting this kind of I don't know this this unclear, silly um, vague 
illusory set of references to things that might make people think. And I, and I don't think it's, it, it's, it's, I know it's anecdotal, but I think somehow it, it relevant that as we left the theater yesterday, we overheard two white men talking with each other about what they were trying to figure out about the film. And, and neither of them were, again, we'd hear the whole conversation. We weren't we're just walking past them, but, but neither of them appeared to be challenged, moved, or, or encouraged to think in a provocative way about their negative impact on the world. Um, they seem to just be trying to, you know, have a little fun trying to figure things out. And that's kind of what kind of like for me was icing on the cake about what blew me about this thing. Like I want, you know, what I want would like out of films that are wanting to be, I want people to come out. I want them to be mad at the film. I want them to be feeling or, or feeling guilty or feeling challenged or feeling like they need to change themselves or feeling mad that someone told them they need to change like something like that. Anyway. All right, that was it. That was all I had on it. Uh, and and again, just to just to go back and, and I'll wrap with the you know uh, I'll check your comments here in a second. But just to, to wrap on the the Vernon philosophy again, it's not to say we. I'm not arguing don't see the film. I'm not arguing don't enjoy yourself if you do see the film and enjoy it. I'm simply saying yet again the 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 uh, uh, the attempts I've seen happening uh, to to try to place this film and its politics or to to set it as in as a sort of a third installment in, in Jordan Peele's critique of the world, just it, it didn't work. It didn't, I don't think it worked, uh, in that way. Um, and I don't have to know all of your cinematic background and all of your 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 you know. So another another point that they made about his fandom of of Japanese anime uh, is is at the end when you see Kiki Palmer riding a motorcycle and she does that slide on the bike that you've seen in all the comics and move you know. And, and like she's a superhero bike rider. And I know they made one reference to her being good on the bike early in the film, but there's, it just seemed to come out of nowhere. And it was just, it seemed out of place. Um, we don't even see how Kaluuya survives. I know supposedly you're supposed to not look, if you don't look directly at the being, it won't kill you. He then looks at the being, but isn't killed. Is that because he was friendly with the animal? With the animals, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 and then they kill the, and then they, and then they kill the entity by putting uh, uh, a, a big um, balloon boy. You know, he tries to eat the big balloon boy, and and um, what do they call those things? You know what they call those things? And and it and he died, and the and the entity just explodes and dies. I, I don't know. All right. Okay, that was all I had. Um, what did you all? I don't know if you all saw it. If you think any, if I missed anything, but the Akira slide. Thank you, thank you, thank you, folks. That's exactly what it was. And I don't watch that stuff, so I don't, I don't, I don't really care. And then I'm like, what is? Actually, I'm really not asking for a lot. So, so remember. Maybe I, I, Big T, I appreciate you saying it this way. What I'm saying, though, is that I'm not saying I'm asking for a lot. I'm not asking for anything from Hollywood. What what I'm saying is I want. I'm asking something from us. So maybe maybe that's what you mean. Maybe I misread that initially. So maybe I am asking a lot. I'm asking for us to stop looking for the politics we want in these films because they're never there. They're never there appropriately, and they're always undercut by something else in the film. So the, the net is never going to be positive in, in, in the political balance. So that is I, that is what I'm asking. I, I, and I don't like when I see people trying to put onto these films those kinds of politics, or, the, or, or, or they're, they're, they're suggesting that these films are doing more than they really are. Uh, and the same thing I feel about musically or or artists, you know, when, the same thing I felt about Beyonce's, you know, Break My Soul and people are like, oh, it's another revolution. By the way, I just saw a review of that album from one of the video channels I watch, um, em Empress, em Impressivity, something, um, a black woman's, you know, pop culture channel. And she didn't like the album. She said that and she said that Break My Soul was as political as the album got. So if, if anybody thought there was going to be more, apparently it's just dance music and her having Beyonce having. Yes, Jordan. Yes. Yes. 
And I mentioned this when, when I did my little review of that film. Candyman, I thought this second, this new Candyman did a lot of good stuff in it. And I think that was, was that the one? That and Queen and Slim, I was asking, were like, these are the, some of the bigger challenges to my Vernon philosophy. Um, ultimately, I'd probably argue that even Candyman at the end of the day, because it still has to be a sensationalized horror film and didn't, you know, isn't going to be the monster hit. It's not going to have the political impact we want, but I think it did do a lot of good stuff in it. You're right about that. Um, yeah, it unfolded with wings. Yeah, I mean, I, and I've seen some of the reviews have talked about that 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 the the entity itself was meant to be something that could polymorph, and that that was part of how they they were arguing that it was a kaiju like a Godzilla, that it's always been here. Um, yeah, I don't, you know. Yeah, but he, he, Don Cheetah was good in that. And so was, uh, uh, um, um, what's her name? What's her name from around here? What's the sister's name that was in the movie with him in this? Damn. Baby boy and all of that. What was it? What's her name? Damn. Anyway, but Petey Green wasn't a radical. Petey Green was no revolutionary. And as you saw, even in the Don Cheadle version, Petey Green went on the radio and told everybody to calm down. That's what everybody, that's what, that's, that's why they would, that's, that was the scene that told me they would let him be made a movie. They would make a movie about a, a radio host like Petey Green. Cause he went on the radio and told everybody to calm down after King was assassinated. You know, um, Eric Bogosian, that's his name. Thank you. Hold up. Is this the Vernon? Is this my man Vernon? VO, is that you? Please come back in here and tell me that's you. My main man Vernon, boy. I, I'll never forget that conversation that, out, out back behind the pizza joint we used to work at, man, when you broke this down. And I was like, you're crazy. And you were right, Morgan State grad. Is that the VO? Is that the ep ep eponymous? My man Vern, what's up, Vern? Man, holler at me, man, when you get a chance. Let's catch up, man. My main man. Oh, I love that you showed up. I told you I was going. I, I, I got his permission. I said, man, I want to name a philosophy after you. And there he is, my main man, Vern. That's it. And and Vern, let me know if you've changed. Have you updated your 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 views on this? I believe with the angle, the alien angle and focus, more serious issues wouldn't have been so. That's it, though. That's my point. That's it, Vern. And that's that's exactly my point. If you do a film that's going to be more serious, it's not going to have the it's not going to have the reach because ultimately, what what is successful is what what white audiences want to see. And white audiences might go to a little bit of, you know, they might go a little bit to a Jordan Peele movie, but if, as long as he stays in sci-fi, if he tries to do, if he tries to really Spielberg it up in terms of black history and do like something serious with like a real Amistad film, because that Spielberg joint was atrocious, or, or what if, if Spielberg is doing Amistad, because we've never, even with all the Jews in Hollywood, we've still never seen a real movie about all the Jewish uprisings against the Nazis. We got that one, one film, Defiance, the true story about two Belarusian Jews, shout out to Belarus, where my mother's father's from. Belarusian Jews who who went into did guerrilla warfare against the Nazis, but that film didn't do well, even though it had 007 in it and Old Boy from the X-Men. It didn't do that well, relatively speaking. But let Jordan Peele do a movie about that because there were hundreds of uprisings of Jews and violent rebellions against the Nazis that you never hear about. They never make movies. I've even read articles written by Jews in Jewish publications talking about how you know, the, the, the reasons why Jews, even with their their prevalence in Hollywood, wouldn't want to make those movies. They don't. So let Jordan Peele do that. If you want to be Spielberg, be Spielberg. Oh man, Vernon, thanks for this. You soup man, you don't. 
you super chatting, you still disappoint. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. Thanks for the super chat. Man, Vernon, man, you made my day, man. Good to see you, man. Relatively speaking. Yeah, Schindler's list was atrocious too. I'm saying. Um yeah, that was my point, Devin. Less clear social commentary. So, you know, I just, I'm just not, I'm not. That's him. That's him. We got the, you all who are here live, that we got a special treat today. We got the Vernon in the building. Uh, big shout out to Vernon. Big shout out to Jeff. Big shout out to Greg. My, 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 my old, Greg might have been my oldest friend at this point. But uh, I, I was I was I, I was I was too young and dumb and rough on Greg though, so I'm not mad at him. Peace to him, man. I hope he's doing all right. But yeah, man, Vernon, man, man, them pizza days, boy. I tell you, boy, man. Um, yeah, the messaging was so abstract; it felt intentionally. To, yeah, I, I, mm. Kiki is. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. She also says, I, I don't know the context, so I, did, I, did, I, I don't have, I don't know if I have much. Uh, uh, she just did a, I just saw her on a rant against um, Zendaya. Apparently somebody said that Kiki and Zendaya are comparable, and Kiki went on this whole thing like, nah, don't compare me to her. Plus she light-skinned. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I was feeling the kind of way about that. I was like, the pride in your complexion shouldn't require den 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 denouncing someone else's. So I don't know if Zendaya had said something trifling. I don't know. I don't know what this, I don't know. But I was like, mm, what happened to the black is black is black what happened to you can't you know i'm unalike don't compare me to her she's her thing she's beautiful tab whatever but i'm it. like why i don't know i don't know i didn't I, anyway whatever anyway, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't oh you said vaping is part of her thing or, or her character thing maybe it was but i that was the first thing i thought i was like oh somebody paid a check somebody somebody cut a check to get to get six to get vaping whether it's cigarettes or weed in in this joint uh Oh, I'm told Zendaya didn't say anything. Or was it a rant? No, I'm saying Kiki's was a rant, not not uh, Zendaya. I didn't see Zendaya say, hey, you know, yes, colorism is real, and I don't doubt. I don't. I don't doubt that. I just. I just. It just felt unnecessarily hostile towards Zendaya. Like. I mean, does, you know, I mean, okay, she's not as beautifully dark complected as Kiki, but does that mean, what What does that mean? That she shouldn't exist? That she can't be happy in this world? She can't live? That she can't be part of the black community? That, I mean, what does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, VO in the building. Oh, word. Oh, I didn't know this either. Okay, so let me, yeah, I don't know the content. Okay, there's a lot of it. Mm. She's trying to make man of something she don't actually fully understand and gets the brunt of it as a sweat. Okay, okay, okay. Let's not. All right, okay. <laughs> anyway, so that was it. I just wanted to do a relatively, relatively quick uh, uh, thing on that, having seen the movie. Um, There is no lower bar for Zendaya because they have the same damn career trajectory and Zendaya is younger. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So let's let's wrap this one up. Take a little break. I'm gonna come back at one o'clock and do do an even shorter one. It's gonna be even shorter because I'm not gonna go through the whole article. Even shorter one on this crypto colonialism joint. But this joint. Shout out to Seb on this this joint. Oof. Anyway, thanks everybody. Be back. Uh, uh, Definitely continue to support everything on the channel. Hit all the bells, buttons, and all of that. And uh, I'll catch you next time here at I Mix What I Like. Thanks again, everybody. Peace. Like Fred Hampton used to say, if you're willing to fight for it, only if you're willing to fight. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.